If you apply a force that is parallel to the displacement, we know it is quite easy to find the work done, which is force times displacement. But if you apply the same force at an angle to the displacement, the work done would not be the same. And the reason is that the force you are applying is not entirely used in pulling the rock. Because you can see here, part of it is acting in the vertical direction and part of it is acting in the horizontal direction. And the one acting in the vertical direction is not doing any work since there is no vertical displacement. However, the part of the force acting in the horizontal direction is doing work, which is equal to the force acting in the horizontal direction into the displacement, which will be less than this. So for such situations, the dot product of vectors is a very powerful tool to find the solution to the problems. And that is what we'll learn in this lesson. So in multiplication between two vectors, you can do one of the following. A, multiply scalar to a vector or B, multiply a vector to a vector. Let us take the first case where we multiply a vector with a scalar. So as an example, here is a displacement vector of 2 meters. And if we multiply it with a scalar of value 3, you get a new vector which would be this. That is 3 times the length of the original vector or 6 meters and in the same direction. So more generally, if vector A is multiplied by a scalar S, then the length of the new vector would be S times the original vector length and in the same direction. However, if the scalar is negative, the direction of the new vector will be opposite that of the original vector. As an example, if you have a vector 2i plus 2j and you multiply it with 3, what you get is a vector that is 3 times the length of the original vector. But if you had multiplied it with minus 3 instead of 3 or plus 3, you would have got a new vector 3 times the length of the original vector but in the opposite direction. So this was a simple part. Now let us get on with multiplication where a vector is getting multiplied by another vector. Well, in this you have two types of multiplications. One is called the dot product of two vectors and the other is called the cross product of two vectors. And in this lesson, we'll understand the dot product. So the dot product is also called the scalar product because the product yields a scalar value and not a vector. That is, when you multiply two vectors, to get the dot product, you get a number as the answer and not a vector. Let us understand this deeper by going back to the example we started the lesson with and try to find the work done using dot product. And what you'll first do is we will resolve this vector into its horizontal and vertical components. So f cos theta becomes a horizontal component and f sine theta becomes a vertical component. And now we can say the work done is equal to the force acting in the horizontal direction that is f cos theta into the displacement which is d and you can also see that no work is done in the vertical direction because the displacement is zero in the vertical direction now we can rewrite this expression as f times d cos theta which in turn can be written as f dot d or the dot product of f with d is the work done. More generally, if you ask what is the dot product of vector A and vector B, we will write it as A dot B is equal to AB cos phi, in which A is the magnitude of vector A, B 
is the magnitude of vector b and phi is the angle between vector a and vector b now you could ask which angle should be taken this one or this one because both qualify as angles between a and b well you can take either simply because cosine of phi or cosine of 360 minus phi is the same okay let us do something interesting but you need to pay a little extra attention to understand this so if you zoom into this expression what you will see is that a dot product can also be expressed as the product of magnitude of the first vector and the component of the second vector along the direction of the first vector with this understanding you can visualize that if angle phi between two vectors reduces the component of one vector along the other should increase and becomes maximum when the angle is zero or the two vectors become parallel or even anti-parallel which therefore means the dot product would be maximum on the other hand if phi was 90 degrees you can see the component of one vector along the other will be zero and therefore the dot product should also be zero so by now you would have also figured out that a dot b is equal to b dot a that is commutative law applies to the dot product of two vectors now if you take dot product of two vectors in i j k notation also called the unit vector notation we can write the dot product as a dot b is equal to a x i plus a y j plus a z k dot bxi plus byj plus bzk and if we expand the right hand side what we get is this now you should remember that i dot i is equal to j dot j is equal to k dot k which is equal to 1 into 1 times cos of 0 because you can see the magnitude of each of these vectors is 1 and the angle they make with itself would be zero degrees so this equals one and i dot j is equal to i dot k is equal to j dot k is equal to one into one times cos of 90 which equals zero because again you can see the magnitude of the vectors is one and vector i and vector j or vector i and k or vector j and vector k are perpendicular to each other that's why we take a 90 degree angle here and when we apply this over here what we find is that these terms become zero and what you're left with is a dot b is equal to a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z so let us solve a problem to get a better understanding of what we have learned so far and what we have here are two vectors the magnitude of vector a is four and that of b is 5 what's also given is that vector a makes an angle of 53 degrees with a positive direction of x-axis and vector b makes an angle of 130 degrees with a positive direction of x-axis and the question is what is a dot b so we'll find the answer to this question using two different methods one would be short and the other would be long and you should also understand the long method because there will be situations where you would require that method to find solution to other problems. So the short one is that a dot b is equal to a b cos phi where phi is the angle between the two vectors and we can see that the angle is 130 minus 53 which equals 77 degrees. Therefore a dot b is equal to 4 into 5 times cos of 77 degrees which equals 4.5 the other method is using the formula a dot b is equal to ax bx plus ay by by plus az bz but 
to use this equation we need to know the components of both the vectors a and vector b so let us go ahead and find those so here we can see ax is equal to 4 cos 53 degrees which equals 2.407 and ay is equal to 4 times sine of 53 degrees which equals 3.195 and bx is equal to 5 cos of 130 degrees which equals minus 3.214 and by is equal to 5 times sine of 130 which equals 3.83 and when we substitute the value what we get is this equals 2.407 into minus 3.214 plus 3.195 into 3.83 plus 0 into 0 which equals 4.5 so you see we get the same answer using different methods so let us do this interesting problem where we have two vectors vector a is equal to 3i minus 4j and vector b is equal to minus 2i plus 3k and the question is what is angle phi between these two vectors so let us start with the equation a dot b is equal to a b cos phi so how we will approach this problem is that we will find a dot b on the left hand side and the magnitude of a and b on the right hand side and once we know these we can find angle phi so the easy part is finding a and b and a is equal to square root of 3 square plus minus 4 square which equals 5 and b is equal to square root of minus 2 square plus 3 square which equals 3.61 now we'll find the left hand side so a dot b is equal to 3i minus 4j dot minus 2i plus 3k and if you solve this what you get is this and we got to remember that the dot product of like vectors such as i dot i would be 1 and unlike vectors like i dot k will be 0. So now what we have is minus 6 is equal to 5 times 3.61 times cos phi so phi is equal to cos inverse minus 6 divided by 5 into 3.61 which equals 109 degrees so you see the dot product of two vectors is a very useful tool in physics but if you wish to build a strong foundation vectors including cross product of two vectors i would suggest you should head over to this playlist and like always if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video